Rocky Erickson, for a generation, the sports voice of the state of Montana. I have in my phone an email you sent me quite a long time ago, and every now and then I, I fired up and listened to it again. Sammy's story? It's called Sammy Time. Sammy Time. You know, I'm often asked, I announce thousands of games, and people ask me, what's the most exciting game? I've ever announced. I've announced mm -hmm. triple overtime state championship games. I was planning on asking you that. But they weren't as exciting as what Sammy did mm -hmm. in the consolation game of the 1999 State AA tournament in Bozeman. Sammy Riddle from Missoula Hellgate. Unbelievable player. <laughs> Five ten point guard, mm -hmm. big red afro. I mean, this kid could play, <laughs> but he had a little bit of an attitude. Very arrogant. So he had three huge games, the first three games of the tournament. Consolation game, Hellgate was trying to win their first trophy in several years. He only had four points. Mm -hmm. Kevin Inflato was going to the free throw line for Helena High. His team's behind by two. He makes both free throws. Ooh. The game's tied. Game goes into overtime, right? It's not going to happen. I need two overtime games that day. I got the state championship next, but I'm okay. Because okay. Kevin Plato's two for ten from the free throw line. Right. He won't make both free throws, right? He makes both free throws. Oh. They inbounce the ball to Sammy. I can't believe what he did. 23 seconds to go. The game is tied at 40. Sammy yeah, Riddle, look right. at this. Mr. Showmanship. He asked for the fans to stand up. He dribbles between his legs. 13 seconds left. If you love high school basketball, you got to love this. Riddle will set it up. Sammy, five, four, Sammy, the shot, yes, his Whoa. name is Sammy uh, Riddle, the game is uh, over, I'm not believing it. No, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't quite end there though, Bill, Make it. because he sends me a postcard about a week later, I send him a copy of that shot, and in the postcard, which I have framed in my office, he said, every night, out loud, my goal and my dream was to make the game-winning shot in a state tournament. Wow. And he would practice in his basement. Wow. So he said, thank you for sending me a hard copy of my dream. Wow. But it doesn't quite end there. Two months later, I announced the Montana Wyoming All-Star Basketball Series. I interview every player. Came time to interview Sammy. I played the tape. I said, Sammy, what's going through your mind? He said, when my team's behind or the game's tied, that's when I want the ball because that's Sammy time. There are a lot of Montana high school basketball football players that are carrying around CDs that you've sent them of something special that they did. That's kind of a nice thing you do, Bob. Huh? You know, several years ago, I go to an indoor football game in Billings. I get there late, it's dark, they're doing the anthem, and lights come back on, the guy next to me I recognize is a, one of the coaches in Billings. He says, Rock, you gotta hear this, you gotta hear this. So he plays the ringtone on his phone when his son calls him. It's my play-by-play -play call of his son's first varsity touchdown. Amazing. First of all, you grew up on a farm, didn't you? Family wheat farm. Okay. As the only boy. Okay. And I heard so, my dad say over and over again, someday, son, it's all gonna be yours. Years. Not and, for me, Bill. No. Worst farmer in the world. I'm the one that put gas in the diesel tractor. Oofta. Seriously. Like, oofta. And this is a little no. town. This isn't a... It's pretty big. What, it's had 50, 50 people. Okay, Vida, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Dad just happened to be the, on the school board. Okay. So we had a key to the school. Now, on Sundays, the kids from Will Point and Circle High School would come out, want to use the Vida gym, come to our house. I was in third or fourth grade. I'd take them over, unlock the gym, but I'd stick around and sit on the sidelines and do play-by-play -play while they played. Then in fifth grade, my parents got me a reel-to-reel -reel machine long before cassette Ooh. tapes or digital recorders, Ooh. about three feet high. Wow. Took it to the Wolf Point games, sat in the bleachers, and pretended I was Howard Cosell. You want to talk nerd? <laughs> I mean, can you believe? I mean, people must have laughed their head off. Amazing. I always knew what I wanted to do. Yeah. I was graduated from college in 82, spent a year in Glendive, and uh, then I transferred to Billings in 83. I worked for the Enterprise Network, which owned all the religious broadcasting yeah. stations Pro in Montana. Radio. My memory of that, Rocky, was that you went to work for them selling radio just so, just so you could talk them into letting you broadcast high school sports. I was doing some freelance sports casting, but not enough money 
turn a living, so you had to have a real job right. over and above sports. But I did talk Herm into letting us do sports on a right. gospel station in 1987. A gospel daytime station. Yeah. Now, I, I, I still don't know how you broadcast nighttime games on a station. I think station. we did, but we didn't tell anybody, but I'm not exactly <laughs> sure how we did it. And then Taylor Brown came and recruited right. you to create uh, uh, Montana Sports Program for Northern Broadcasting Station. And your show is now on? It's on around 40 stations across Montana. Wow. You got a minute for a story? Yeah. Tomorrow night, I will announce the 65th East West Shrine football game. In attendance at the banquet and at the game will be a young gentleman by the name of Tom LaProsse. Tom LaProsse played in the first game in 1947. Wow. He was a captain. He kicked off to start the game. He made the game's first tackle. Game ended that night. Him and his high school sweetheart went to the courthouse, got married. Married. Wow. And he'll be in the audience. He'll be there. He's never missed again. Good.